Hey everybody, Jason Shadrick here with PremierGuitar.com, and we're with Jimmy Herring at Manifold Studios in Pittsburgh during your, your two-day Jimmy Herring Sessions event. And we're going to take some time out to talk about a uh, new tune off your new album, uh, Bilgewater Blues. And first, tell us a little bit about the instrument you use on this track and what kind of drew you to this to, for, this, uh, for this song. This is a, a Jerry Jones baritone guitar. Um, this thing is amazing. I, I first had a, a, a Dan Electro baritone, mm -hmm. not a real one, but a reissue one that you can pick up for around 300 bucks. And I, I got one and just quickly, you know, new stuff started coming out immediately. And uh, I was and really love the, uh, the sound of the low tuning, uh, but it's still standard tuning. Most people tune them from B to B, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I tune them actually, or at least at this point, I'm still tuning it a whole step lower than that, which makes the strings quite floppy. But it, it has a guttural thing for playing blues that is just, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But we've had to up the stream, string gauge to try to compensate for the, you know, low tuning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a, uh, and when I, when I played the um, Dan Electro, I was like, this thing is so great, but you know, it had the, the frets underneath would cut you when you're sliding, you know, you get, I'm bleeding, you know, <laughs> things like that. And mm -hmm. it, it, these are, these Jerry Jones guitars are the same basic thing except built, you know, with higher grade components and his level of, uh, of uh, workmanship in these guitars is amazing. Mm -hmm. and I, I've known people that have had these Jerry Jones guitars for years. They're incredible guitars. And these pickups are amazing. They have a sound that is just, I've never heard anything like it. <laughs> but they don't sound the same if you put them in a Stratocaster. Oh yeah, I bet. We have all tried it and it <laughs> doesn't, I mean it works, they sound great, but not like they do in these things. These things are made of masonite or something like that and they're hollow I believe. Uh, Joel knows more about it than I do, but uh, I just know I like the sound of it. Mm -hmm. So take mm -hmm. us through, uh, through uh, this tune here. This tune is basically, uh, it, I'm playing like if I would play an A, yep. but really it's in D because of this tuning. So concert you know. D. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but I'm, playing, I'm basically looking at this tune like I would a, a funky kind of blues, dominant blues in, uh, in A, you know, where you have the... right here you know just yeah you've got a dominant seven shape with a flat seven and the, the third here and then the fifth on top and I'll, I'll, I'll hit you know like a, a riff you can fill that in with whatever you want you know yeah. The intro, I think, is something along the lines of, uh, and then I go into the riff, you know. And then the group comes in, and then it goes to the, you know, it's like four bars on that, and goes to the four, four chord. Back to the one. going to go to a D, little ACDC kind of thing, you know, like a, <laughs> it's just, you know, a riff kind of thing. Yep. Then there's a turnaround that goes. Which is kind of a gospel-ish kind of turnaround, yeah. which it's going to the two chord and see again this is not in a but i'm relating it to a because mm -hmm. as a guitar player think of it as an a is it yeah. okay if i call it b7 yes to d <laughs> you do they the can do the math at home you do yeah do the math at home kidding. <laughs> but you know it goes it goes to this dominant seventh chord it's like the one from here up a whole step and then it goes to the four chord and then it goes to the four chord triad over the five chord bass note which is a typical gospel five chord kind of thing another verse like the same way we just talked about yep. and then it, it's gonna um, let's see the turnaround the next time is 
Oh, oh, I know. The same turnaround at the end of the next verse, right? Like. And now the chorus is coming. Okay, the chorus is just A7. You know, and then moving up a whole step. Then the four chord. It's sort of like having a one, two, four progression. Mm -hmm. And then back to one. With and the two being a dominant chord. Yeah, yep. they all are actually, yep. you know, like, actually the first one, you know, they're either dominant or they're, they're, they're major, but and you get these little, but I don't know, I'm not sure if I, yeah, the flat seven could be in there, like, turnaround is a little bit different this time and it goes but it's just the four chord going to the four chord triad over the five chord bass note <laughs> typical gospel, gospel thing. Yep. and then it resolves to the one so it'll go like you know but uh that that chorus again you could put the flat seven I, i'm kind of leaning toward the you know That's definitely a dominant seventh yep. on the four chord, but on the first two, you can or if you want, but I kind of, I don't think I am when I'm playing that rhythm. Okay. I think I had a little lick like that in there. basically two triads if, if this were standard tuning this would be uh, this would be an A to a B minor to an A to a B minor back to an A yep. kind of another gospel thing you know like they're just lower inversions each time A to B minor then A to B minor A so it's gonna go like Clavinet solo, which has this little riff. Basically, there's a little. And talk to me a little bit, but yeah, about your little uh, slap, <laughs> Victor Wooten type thing going on there. <laughs> not, not, not in a million years. It can't even. <laughs> this is nothing to him. Uh, it, it would be like a. Let's see. Like a triplet see. feel? Yeah, yep. yeah. But I'm trying to remember how I start it. Yeah, I guess what I'm doing is hitting a, a, a muted thing here and then slapping here and then another quick mute. And then you hit the downbeat. You know. It's easy if you think of it like, I stole this from Andy West off the of Dixie Dregs album. Mm -hmm. He did a solo on I'm Freaking Out, you know, the, the classic Dixie Dregs incredible masterpiece. Yep. And he did that. Kind of slap and pop. Yeah, down. yeah, it was this kind of thing where you had a, 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 a slap, then a, a slap with your left hand that doesn't produce a note, and then two notes, you know, like. Let's see. You know, bass players do this stuff all the time. So I just went, I stole that much of it. And so we were going into it from. Uh, more subtle but you know there's two of them Thank you. 
draws and it, it go, that goes back into the little funk thing between the clav and the uh, guitar. Yep. You know, where it just goes. live we, we we played live in the studio and i didn't play any melodies or anything i just played rhythm through the whole tune hadn't even written the melodies yet mm -hmm. the song came the day before the session started and so it wasn't a real song yet you know and, but we noticed when we listened to it when we were playing this section matt was playing clavinet and man you could not tell when you john listened to it the producer and we were like can we mute the drums right there? Can we mute the um, bass right there? And we just listened to the clavinet and the baritone guitar, and you couldn't tell who was doing what because they sounded so similar. Wow. And that's the stuff we live for, you know, yeah. when that kind of happy accident happens. And so we, we actually uh, do that in the song now. We, we did the breakdown, and we had it just, just the two of us doing that mm -hmm. before the drums come in and then the guitar solo happens. And that arrangement kind of just popped out in the studio. Yeah, yeah. it did. And I mean, I pretty much had it um, except for that. Yep. Um, going back and, and doing that and also I didn't have the melodies and so I had to do them mm -hmm. um, but you know that kind of came quickly when because we're you know we're, it's, it's basically a blues tune a guttural kind of blues tune so I'm just looking to you know <laughs> Stuff. Then mm -hmm. it goes to the four chord. And then the, uh, the, the ACDC. I just, part. yeah, the ACDC <laughs> part. I just did something like. Which is sort of just extrapolating on. That. are all based out of that kind of thing you know blue scale and yep a lot of pentatonics yeah a lot of mm -hmm. pentatonics and major pentatonics mixed with uh you know that thing we were talking about before where you resolve the minor thirds to the major thirds yep. mm -hmm. you don't get rid of the minor thirds you just make sure that you know like and you know blurring that line because you know like slide guitar players they don't have frets i mean they do but they don't they don't play they don't like, you know them. they're fretless the, the, the slide makes it fretless so when you go they're not you know sometimes you're bending into notes in, that aren't really on the fret you know you're in between two notes you know I'm not sure if that was one of them but you know that dominant pentatonic again it goes to another key oh, it goes yeah. to a new five chord you mm -hmm. know instead of it resolving to the one like this uh, it goes Gives 
gives it kind of a lift at the end. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then it ends on that turnaround again. That. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. sure. it's pretty basic. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Jim. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk us through that tune. Thank you. Thank you. This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com. <laughs>